Hello everybody. Today we're gonna check some main points for what you're gonna be told this year. Okay, first uh, of all, we gonna check some general notes like the first one here. Others, another and other. We have three words here. Others, another and other. The first word, others, we can use it as a subject or uh, as an object. For example, some robots dive on the water, others are sent inside volcanoes. We use the word here as a subject. What about the second word, another? Another is followed by a singular noun. For example, a robot went to another planet to study the soil. The third word, other, other is followed by a plural noun. For example, helping other people is a duty. Other people. Where is the difference between these two words, sound and voice? Let's check the examples here. I hear the sound of breaking glass in front of my house. And the second example, I can't hear your voice. Please speak up. So uh, the difference here uh, that we can use voice just for human beings, but sound for everything, like the sound of breaking glass the sound of uh, a horn of the car and so on sorry remember and remind the first word remember like this example I remember to send the email I remember by myself to send the email but the second word remind for example, robots can even remind you to send your email. So something or someone remind someone else to do something. It's necessary, essential, important, to infinitive. It's plus an adjective plus to infinitive. For example, it's important to describe character as well. We can use essential or important or necessary. Expert at plus a noun or a gerund. For example, in ancient Egypt, the people became expert at building boats or expert at boats plus a noun or a gerund. Being plus a gerund or plus two infinitive. For example, we can say the first steamship began to cross the sea in 1800s or the first steamship began crossing the sea in 1800s. The next one, need plus to infinitive or need plus noun. For example, farmers need to know when the Nile was going to flood. Need to know. Need to infinitive. Or, my car is broken. It needs repairing. Needs plus noun. Repairing. To, so as to, in order to, and so that. What is the difference between these uh, phrases or words? Let's check the first three words. To, so as to, in order to. They are followed by an infinitive. But so as to is followed by a sentence. You can see here a subject plus may or might, can or could, then the infinitive. For example... They invented the first sail in order to move faster up the river. Or we can say to move faster up the river, so as to move faster up the river. But the second example here about so that, like this example, the Egyptian, invent, the Egyptian invented the calendar so that they, here is the subject, could, we say that we can use one of these words here, may, might, can, or could, could, then the infinitive like plant so that they kill they could plant their crops at the right time now let's check this grammar books here it's about transitive and intransitive verbs the transitive verb has a direct object or an indirect object okay some transitive verbs also have 
indirect object here, as we said. You can read the first point here. For example, Tariq asked a question. So if you ask yourself, what did he ask? A question, so this is the direct object. What about the second example here, Tariq asked me a question. Who did he ask? You can ask yourself, who did he ask? He asked me. So me here is an indirect object. So the transitive verb can be followed by uh, uh, just one object or two objects. Another example, Samir bought me a present, two objects here. Samir bought a present for me. This is the same sentence here, but uh, we uh, exchange it here, the objects, the indirect one and the direct one. Let's check this note here. If you use the transitive verb, then the indirect object, the indirect object is followed directly with a direct one. Like this example, Ali sent me an email. But if you use the direct object instead of the indirect one, so we'll use here prepositions like two or four. Like this example, Ali sent an email to me. It depends on the verb you'll use here. Like this one here, uh, Samir bought a present for me, but this one Ali sent an email to me. What about the intransitive verbs? We use these verbs when uh, they uh, doesn't, or the intransitive verbs uh, don't have a direct object. They don't need a direct object. The sentence can be completed with just the noun plus the verb. For example, the baby is sleeping. We don't have here any objects. Ahmed runs fast. Fast here is it's not an object, it's uh, an adjective. Uh, sorry, it's an adverb. Then we have here, we left early in the morning. The verb here, left, we left early in the morning. We don't have here any objects. Let's go back for some uh, notes. The first one here, we have two words, indoor and outdoor. What is the difference here? Of course, you know the meaning in Arabic. There were as many as indoor course, indoor course, malab dakhliya, for example, like a course for tennis or table tennis, something like this. But outdoor, like this example, football is played outdoors. Number two, French, the word French. We can use this word as uh, if we want to uh, speak about a language or a nationality or a group of people. Like these examples here. I met a French tourist yesterday. So we hear, uh, we are talking here about the nationality of the tourist. The second example, tennis was invented by the French in the 11th century. So here we are talking about French people, the French, if we use the plus an adjective, so we are talking here about a group of people, like the blind, we are talking about blind people. And the third example here, I can speak French very well, of course French here is a language. Number three, congratulaton, congratulaton, congratulaton plus a noun or a gerund, for example, I congratulated my brother on winning the tennis match or I congratulated my brother on the match. Sport. Of course you know the meaning in Arabic sport like this example football is a popular sport. But what about this one here? Apologizing to the referee means that you are a good sport. A good sport here means in Arabic شخص زروح رياضي. Number five, light. I want you to check the meaning here for this word. The first example, it was light at 6 a.m. Can you turn on a light? The bag is quite light. And please light a fire to cook dinner. In the first example, it was light. Light here it means mudi. The second one, can you turn on a light? Light here is a noun, bimana do. The third one, the bag is quite light. It's an adjective here, bimana khafif. And the last one, it's a verb. Please light a fire, yushal, to cook dinner.
Number six, the word break. We can use this word as a noun or a verb. For example, I shall take a break between lessons. Of course, here, break is a noun. But in this example, the child might break my sunglasses. So break here is a verb. The same for the next word, can. You can use it as a noun, like this example here. I bought a can of lemonade. But we can use as a verb, like this example here, so I can swim well. Number eight, it's fun to infinitive. We said it before, it's plus an adjective, then to infinitive. For example, it's fun to play tennis. If you remember, we said before, it's important to, it's essential to, and so on. Number nine, would prefer, can be followed by a noun or adjective plus a noun or to infinitive. For example, I would prefer volleyball. Volleyball here is a noun. The next example, I would prefer a different job. An adjective plus a noun. A different job. What about to infinitive? Like this example here, I prefer to leave early. Now let's check these grammar books here. It's about obligation and necessity. So we will talk here about have to or has to, had to, and must or mustn't for obligation. In the first point here, we are talking about have or has to in the present form to talk about rules or things that other people say are necessary. For example, we have to go to school on time. Or she has to get a passport to travel to London. And عندي هنا إلزام خارجي. تمام؟ in the second point here, we're talking about the negative form. So we use don't or doesn't have to to talk about things that are not necessary. For example, she doesn't have to hurry. She isn't late for school. What about the best form? It's here in the third point. The best simple form is had to. And of course, had to is the same for all ob uh, subjects. For example, I couldn't go to the park yesterday because I had to finish my homework. He had to finish, we had to finish, it doesn't matter. It's say the same for all subjects. What about the negative form of this one? The negative uh, of the best symbol is didn't, or this is the abbreviation here, didn't have to plus the infinitive. For example, we didn't have to do computer studies when we were at primary school. It shows lack of necessity in the past, but this one here shows lack of necessity in the present. How to make questions with the question word? It's like this example here. How long did you have to wait until the bus arrived? Now we'll talk about must or mustn't. We use must or mustn't plus the infinitive, of course, without the preposition to, to say that something is important to do or important not to do. For example, you must see a doctor. You have been ill for a work for a week. And here is uh, this sentence here is a strong advice. You must see a doctor. What about the second one? He mustn't park here. It's again is the law. احنا بنتكلم عن قانون. بنتكلم عن قوانين قواعد تعليمات او اعطاء اوامر او الزام داخلي ممكن حاجه داخلي انا بعمل جوايا بنستخدم must or mustn't. طبعا بيستخدم mustn't for prohibition للمنع والتحريم. Now let's go back for some notes. Like the first one here, being plus the adjective, we can use being an, an adjective as a subject. For example, being very intelligent. This is the subject phrase here. Being very intelligent can help people to do amazing things. Number two, the verb make. Make plus an object is followed by an infinitive or an adjective. For example, Ali makes me laugh. We use here the verb, infinitive here, the infinitive. Ali makes me laugh or like this example here, what makes people intelligent? We use here the adjective. Number three, we have three words here, breathe, breathing or breath. The verbs and the nouns. 
We have three examples here. The first one, I find it difficult to breathe. Number two, athletes can control their muscles and breathing. And the third one, sailors need to have very good breath. The next slide. Number four, the verb spend. Spend plus time plus a gerund. For example, I spend much time researching information online or I spend two hours researching information online. Number five, we have here the verb stop. Stop can be followed by a gerund or two infinitive. What about the meaning? Let's check the examples here. Should I stop playing computer games? And the next one, I stop to buy some fruit. Is there a difference in the meaning here? Of course, let's uh, show you or explain uh, you the difference here uh, with another example. If we say, I stop talking to my friends and I stop to talk to my friends. What is the difference here? I stop talking to my friends. It means uh, I stop talking to them. I not, I not, I'm not talking to them anymore. But if I say, I stop to talk to my friends, I stop in my way to talk to them. I stop in my way to, in order to, take to, uh, to talk to them. Let's uh, check this uh, grammar box here. It's about the ING forms. Uh, we can use the ING forms as nouns, like the first two examples here. I'd like to read a book. To read here is a verb. But look at the second example. Reading is enjoyable. Reading here is a noun. We can use the ing forms also or nouns as subjects or objects of a sentence. For example, I love learning. Learning here is an object. But if we say washing up isn't my favorite thing to do. So washing up here is a subject. How can we add the ing to the verbs? For example, if you have a verb ending in uh, letter e, for example, so you will omit this letter and put the ing or add the ing, it will be writing. What about verbs ending in consonants preceded by a vowel like swim? You will double the last letter. It will be swim, it will be swimming. What about verbs ending in ie? We will use the letter Y instead of IE and it will be lying, lie, lying. For example, lying in bed for a long time isn't healthy. But here we have a note about prepositions which followed by ING forms of the verb. Like this example here, thank you for breaking, sorry, for baking my cake, mom. Thank you for baking my cake, mom. And take care that not all words ending in ING are nouns. For example, swimming is fun. Swimming here is a noun. But the second example here, we are swimming. Our swimming here is a verb. Let's check some general notes again. The first one, away to plus verb ing or away to uh, to infinitive. The first example here, system means a way of doing something. We said a way of plus a gerund, a way of doing something. But a way to plus infinitive, like this example here, Lewis wanted to find a way to improve the system. What about the second point? The verb continue. Continue can be followed by a gerund or to infinitive. For example, the rain continued to fall all evening continued to fall or he continued adding more signs to his system number three look up the phrasal verb look up look up means to look uh, for a word in a dictionary for example for example children can look up words and find out their meanings Equipment. Equipment is an 
uncountable word. The example here, Lewis's father made equipment for horses. It's an uncountable word. Instead of or instead without the preposition of. What is the difference here? Instead of can be followed by a noun or a gerund. For example, in blind schools, there were 14 books which had a system of dots instead of letters. Instead of plus a noun or instead of verb ing, instead of using letters, instead of letters. But number six here, instead plus a sentence. For example, I won't drink juice. Instead, I'll have some fruit. Instead plus a sentence. Number seven, take his name or be named after. Bimana yusamma ala ism. She yusamma ala ism, shaks akhar. For example, the science system took his name, Braille. The science system took his name, Braille. Samma ala ismu, Braille. Or the science system was named after him, Braille. The science system was named after him, Braille. Accept. Accept can be followed by a noun or a gerund. For example, he accepted my invitation. Invitation here, my invitation. We use here the noun. Or, she accepted coming to the library with me. Number nine, take up. Take up means start to learn something, start to study something. For example, some people are encouraged to take up sign language. Now let's check the grammar books here. It's about non-defining relative clauses. The non-defining relative clauses we use here to give extra information about the noun. We use, of course, a relative pronoun who for people, which for things and animals, where for places, when for time, uh, whose to show positions. Let's check the first one, who for people, like the first example here. Mr. Zaki, who lives next door, is a scientist. Number two, which for things and animals. Like this example here, elephants, which live for around 45 years, are found in Africa. Number three, or the third point here, we use where for places and when for time. Like this example here, we went to visit my cousin in Luxor where they have lived since the 1970s, 70s, sorry. And the next example, the photo shows Alexander in 1990, when my parents lived there. Here we're talking about the place here, about Luxor, and then here in the next example, we are talking about uh, time, like in 1999. And the next point, we are talking here about the relative pronoun, whose, to show position. For example, Mr. Idol, whose factory produces cotton clothes, is very rich. And don't forget that uh, there is always a comma before an undefining relative clause, and maybe after the clause, if it is in the middle of a sentence. For example, I went to visit my friend who lives in Bor Said. We use here the comma before uh, the undefining relative clause. But in the next example here, the post office, which is opposite the bank, is crowded today. We use the comma here before and after the non-defined relative clause, because it, come, it comes in the middle of the sentence. Thank you very much with my best wishes. Thank you.